working off of one of their guys um, and just being able to stay inside and protect the paint and be on the backside and help him out as much as I could. So really just being back there, like I said, matching his physicality at first, then just protecting the rim at, um, on the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I really can't compare it to uh, Arkansas. It was different in Arkansas. You know, I was in a dorm room, so <laughs> you know, um, it was it was the living style was really different. Um, you know, I wasn't in the house or anything like that. I was on campus, so I would say just living in Arkansas. I mean, it gets as cold as it does here, as in Arkansas for sure. Um, you know, it doesn't get as cold as in Chicago. You know, Chicago cold is a different type of cold. You know, you got to really be ready for that. You got to pray and everything the night before, before you go out the next day. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just um, adjusting here is basically just how I adjust it anywhere. You know, I, I have my routine when I get to certain places and I stay locked into that routine throughout the time that I'm there. Curious, your mm-hmm. you can't only when you know someone really act, comes up and asks like do I play basketball and other than that if I'm like in the full wizard's jumpsuit other than that you know I really don't um get stopped or asked or anything you know I try to keep my head in a straight line and I'm not really trying to make eye contact with everybody <laughs> you know because I feel like if somebody really just you know figures out who I am it's gonna be a minute before I leave that spot so that's just my main thing it's just I I picked the wrong times where I wear the wizard's jumpsuit time and time again like um when we had first got back I think we had an off day after and I me and my girl, we had went to um, the movies. My fiance, we went to the movies. We watched them too, you know. And I walked in and um, I had the full jumpsuit on. It was the gray one. <laughs> and I got stopped by a couple of people. But other than that, you know, it's time and time again where I don't really get stopped by anybody. You know, I really go through my shopping routine or anything just in general, my daily routine. And I don't get stopped at all, you know, which is a good thing. Sooner or later, I'm pretty, pretty sure they're going to figure out who I am, you know. Just got to make sure I keep my leg tattoo covered. <laughs> really just sticking to your routine that's my main thing and really just anybody really just needs advice when it comes to sticking to one place and just being able to withstand it just stick to your routine you know not letting anything break you off of what you do day in day out and not letting anything really overwhelm you you know you got stuff off the court that is you know everyday life you know but if you have a routine and if you're comfortable with that routine you go day by day and you know nothing can break you from that I mean, it's all good because you know that you're stable in that situation and anything that could come and try to knock you off your path, you'll be ready for. Um, I don't know what i will say would be my best. You know, I really um, kind of like, I would say has fallen like under um, KCP's wing. You know, he helps me out a lot, especially on defense, on, on and off the floor. He keeps me mentally locked in for sure because there was a lot of frustration with me Throughout the first couple of games throughout the season, I was getting in foul trouble. I wasn't doing the things that I wanted to do or anything like that. He used to always come up to me and just tell him, you know, just stay locked in. You know, certain things, you know, doesn't go our way. That doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You obviously come back out and do something else that you're good at and provide for the team and help us win throughout the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Really, I just because um pretty sure, you know, everybody on the team sees the frustration that I had. You know, he was just one of the main guys that really just came up, you know, patting me on the back, saying I'm doing some of the good things on the floor. You know, it's a lot of stuff that's not going to go your way. Just play through it. That's what you were referring to the other day, I think yesterday, um, or the day before that, you were referring to like, frustration, uh, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you got guys like KCP on the team. You got guys like Montrez, guys like that that are real vocal. And they'll come, they'll come up to you and, you know, let, let you know if you're doing anything bad. And they'll let you know if you're doing anything good. At the same time, they'll get, they'll get you out of the funk that you're in. You know, it's time and time again that I've seen 
then he has been in the funk. Trez would always go up and talk to him. There would be times Corey would. And it's not just like KCP and then it's not just like uh, Trez or anything like that. It's like the whole team, you know, even me. Sometimes I get in there and I try to motivate guys too. Um, and that just, you know, ties in to, you know, how like we win games. Keeping guys out of their funk, you know, time and time again, you got to have short-term memory because it's a long stretch. It's a long 48 minutes the NBA game is. So you got to have patience with the process. Might be times in a game where you feel like you're not doing anything, but there's things that shows up on the stat sheet that other people don't really, I would say, recognize and give you the props for and stuff. So you just got to take it one step at a time. All right, Gaff, we'll switch over to Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Daniel. Um, I'm curious how you guys have progressed offensively. You know, Brad previously said that, you know, you guys are learning things on the fly somewhat. How have you guys been able to progress since, say, training camp to now? And how much more do you think you guys still have to go? I mean, the pressure, I can't even talk. <laughs> the progression is coming um, as the days go by. You know, we're taking it one step at a time. Like, as anybody else have noticed, I mean, we have, you know, a whole nother staff. We have a whole nother scheme of everything that, you know, goes into Wizards basketball. So we're just taking it one day at a time to fully learn everything that goes into what it takes to winning with this team. And, you know, everybody on the team has patience. Everybody on the team knows that we have to do, you know, the little things to do whatever it takes to be able to come out night in, night out and win basketball games. So just taking the time and, you know, having the patience with anything offensively, defensively, whatever, you know, is a real big thing for us because if we can take time and pay attention to detail to the little things that help us win games, it's going to be a great season for us. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. we'll go to Lewis. Hey, Gaff. Um, it's the Jewish uh, holiday of Hanukkah. I'm curious if uh, Denny's mentioned it at all and if you've learned at all about the traditions or been able to celebrate uh, candle lighting or something like that um he has mentioned it he mentioned it i think yesterday before i left the gym because they it was a um i think it was a dish that they eat on hanukkah i believe i forgot what it was it was like a hash brown cake or something like that i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah that. um they, he was trying to get me to try it but you know i i was a bit iffy at the time because it was just like some of the stuff that they were putting on top of it i don't i don't usually eat i was like i'll try it Maybe next time, for sure, you know, whenever I have, um, I would say, the appetite for it. But, yeah, he uh, mentioned it and stuff. I haven't really got to fully, like, understand or just, like, talk to anybody, you know, of his nationality about Hanukkah or anything. So, sooner or later, I'm going to get to be able to uh, fully understand that holiday and stuff, you know. But, yeah, you know, the food, that little dish that I had seen, you know, the hash brown part, that sounded good, I'm not going to lie. Um, but just the stuff that they put on top of it, I was like, eh, I'm a bit iffy about that, you know, because it was, I think, I don't know if it was like a piece of fish or what did they put on top of it? It could have been sour cream or applesauce or. Yeah, it was, just, he just told me sour cream salmon, you know? Yeah, it looks like a tongue. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> not going to lie to you. <laughs> it looked like a what? Uh, uh, the, the salmon that they put on top of it, it looked like a tongue. I'm not going to oh, lie to you, you know, but. It looked, I'm not going to lie, like when I first seen it, it looked good. But then, like I said, when they put the stuff on top of it, I was like, eh, but I'm for sure going to try it next time. Then he was telling me it was a real good dish. So I was like, I'll take your word for it and I'll try it. And if it's not, you got to run suicide for me. <laughs> we'll go over to Christos. Hey, Daniel, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Daniel, how how beneficial for you to have a teammate like Montrez Harland? What did you learn from him so far? Really just, you know, getting back to how I play energy-wise. He comes in night in, night out off the bench and plays with, you know, 110% effort, comes out and plays with high energy night in, night out. And I just wanted to get back to playing like that because I feel like I kind of strayed away from that path because it was at one point in time I was coming off the bench myself and I was coming off the bench with energy just giving 110 percent effort but it was like night in night out that I wasn't starting with that energy and I wasn't starting with you know giving effort going for rebounds making you know getting block shots or doing anything energy plays wise so just seeing him night in night out I was trying to figure out ways to tap back into what I was doing at first before, you know, I got the start in spot or just anything in general. Um, I felt like that I had took steps back 
with how I was playing, you know, just like as a player. So, I mean, he encouraged me a lot. He inspired me a lot to just come in night in, night out and just, you know, play my tail off, go for every block, you know, be smart on defense, you know, and just be vocal, you know, owning my voice and letting guys know that they're about to get screened, being the vocal point on defense and having a defense in my first and offense in my second, not really trying to go take the game and just let it come to me. And uh, speaking about your defensive effort and your blocking ability, what is the biggest growth so far, especially on your blocking ability so far? Um, really just for me is not really just like squatting for everything, um, going for block shots and trying to stay as straight up as I possibly can. Because in this league, you know, you put your hand down towards anything a guard tries to throw up or a big tries to throw up or anything in general, you know, they're going to call a foul on you. So that was one way that it, that's one way of keeping myself out of foul trouble is just really just trying to pay attention to detail and not, you know, bring my hands down if I'm trying to contest a shot or anything. Altering shots, I may get the block, I may not. But at the end of the day, just trying to stay as straight up as I possibly can. You understand Danny brought some uh, locker tips for Asanka? For What's that? He brought uh, some Asanka tips for Oh, did he? That's what Gavin said. Did you not see that? <laughs> nah, I didn't uh, see it. Oh, no, I don't even know what that is. I do have another uh, question about Denny. You, you talked about how his, uh, his defense has stood out to you so far. Um, just so specifically, why would you say that? Uh, I mean, because he's uh, he actually plays defense, and that stands out. Uh, maybe not to the average casual fan or, you know, someone that doesn't know basketball, but, you know, he, he just has, um, you know, a good way about moving his feet, uh, staying in front of guys. Um, you know, does a great job using his hands at the rim, vertical. Uh, verticalities and uh, uh, he's getting better off, off the ball. He's getting better off the ball. So, mm -hmm. I know it's just kind of part of the, the NBA, and you're used to it by now. But when you've got a month ahead of you guys, see where you're sitting on the road all the time. How does that change either what a team can get done, what you can work on individually? Like, what changes in those months or in the way it's for a woman? Well, I mean, a lot of things. I mean, um, you know, you're on the road. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what our road schedule is, honestly, but, um, you know, it's always less gym time. It's always less time to be in the weight room. Um, you know, a lot more alone time on the road with yourself. And, um, you know, especially with the team aspect, it's important uh, to, you know, rally around, you know, especially when you don't have nobody really cheering for you and uh, you're on the road. And, uh, you know, to be able to rally with each other and, you uh, you know, pick up wins on the road when you're on a, you know, week, two week trip uh, is huge for the uh, uh, morale for the team. What happens, I guess, what phase of the season are you in in December? Like, what are you personally trying to focus on? Whereas, like, April, you might be like, okay, it's time to start, like, mentally locking in for, like, a playoff run or something like that. Like, where are you in that world? Um, I mean, it's a little bit different in, you know, every team, you know. Uh, I mean, I think in the past, you know, when you're um, on a, a contending team and, you know, you got a lot of vets, it's a lot of complaints to see and you kind of just get through it because you know you can just turn it on and have a switch. But uh, with a team like this, you know, uh, there is no switch. You know, you kind of have to be on edge every game because, um, you know, you're out there trying to really prove something and, um, you know, have carryover every single – every game, you know, from film, from the court, uh, you know, trying not to make as many mistakes as you did last night. Uh, as a team, collectively, as a ball club. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's all about winning consistent habits right now. You know, can we make the, you know, consistent right play every time? Can we be in the right spot defensively every time? Uh, you know, that that's where, you know, I'm at, you know, especially within the group, so. Mount Rain? Mount Rain? I mean, I haven't got no tattoos lately. Uh, can you not get that there? I mean, I can. I have before. I just don't feel like it. Um, yeah, I don't feel like it. It's kind of tiring. It drains you. I know how hard you work on your position, obviously, defensively. Mm. But does the kind of defense you play where one day you might be matched up against a, a very complete smaller guy, and then last night you're matched up against a larger guy, require any specific type of difference? I mean, I just lift a lot of weights, for real, for real. I just, you know, I lift a lot of weights. Um, you know, I don't look like the biggest guy, but, um, you know, 
the way I train, the way I live every day, it, it helps me. And, you know, for me, I feel like I'm one of the best defenders in the league, um, you know, from the standpoint guarding, you know, one through five. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some nights um, I'm guard, I'm switching out a lot on ones and twos. And like y'all saw last night playing and bang with fives. Um, you know, uh, that just speaks to, you know, my versatility and, uh, you know, how important defense is to me. So. Mike Gus, who's never played a high level college sport, pro basketball. Mm -hmm. The day after you face a guy who's seven feet tall, how do you, do you feel sore? Do you, is it. Man. Yeah. You really just don't know. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know, my, uh, <clears throat> my chest was beating in last night a lot. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, I've been through worse things. So, sorry. I don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah, I don't do drugs. Kyle, uh, now that you spent a little time with Rui in practice, you can shoot around. Uh, what are your impressions of him? Uh, you know, honestly, I haven't really been around too much, you know, honestly, um, you know, might get in some shooting drills or whatnot, but I mean, that's really it. So, um, you know, I'm not really familiar with, you know, the play style, you know, where he likes the ball, you know, um, you know, obviously playing against him, I know the scout report of him, but, um, you know, being with him cohesively, I'm not sure yet because he hasn't been around. So how about just in the a few moments that you spent, um, just personality-wise, just the kind of banter you might exchange? Uh, I mean, he's a really quiet person. Um, so, I mean, obviously, being around new people, you know, most quiet people you know, take a while to, you know, kind of figure out themselves. Uh, not him figuring out himself, but, you know, for others. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he? Yeah. Oh. Nah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. All right, Coos, we'll switch over to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Coos, um, coach, you know, gave you a lot of credit yesterday for, you know, stepping up, taking that challenge. You know, you might not necessarily have all the points, but you played a really important role on the other end of the floor. Is that just something that you learned to do throughout your years in LA that, hey, you know, it's not always going to be scoring that I need to do, but there are other ways that I can help my team? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, who doesn't like to score? Who doesn't like to shoot shots? I mean, that's the whole point of playing basketball, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I just try to win games. Um, you know, uh, it, it's always fun to winning than, you know, scoring 20 points. You know, I've always kind of been that way. Um, so, you know, obviously better, there are better nights, uh, more opportunities, but uh, whatever the task is at hand, um, you know, whether, like I said, it's guarding, you know, a big time, you know, three like Tatum or guarding a perennial all-star five man. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, I just try to get the job done. And Brad had mentioned that, you know, you guys are kind of learning things on the fly, specifically offensively, trying to reintegrate, you know, new roster, new coaching staff, all that. Where have you felt that you guys have made the biggest improvement and where do you feel maybe you guys still have a ways to go? Um, offensively, I mean, I think for the most part, we play the right way for the most part. Um, I think we're making um, improvements that way. Um, you know, but I, you know, I, we have a long ways to go transition wise, you know, our pace sucks, transition sucks, you know, so for us, you know, we're not the best uh, offensive half court team. Uh, and, you know, for us to compete and obviously, you know, get to the playoffs, you know, you, we have to be able to, um, you know, have big games scoring in transition and having uh, adequate pace offensively. And, uh, you know, it's still a work in progress, but, uh, hopefully we can get there. Thanks, Kuz. Christos. Hey, Kuz. Hope you're doing well. What do you say about the, the versatility of this group and how comfortable you feel to surround yourself with players like Davis, Danny, Rui Hachimura, who's on, the way, on his way to return? 
What do you say about the, the flexibility of this group? Um, you know, we're a pretty flexible group. Um, obviously, you know, we have uh, a few guys that are, you know, above 6'8", that are able to play multiple positions, uh, guard multiple positions, and, and, and do multiple things. Um, you know, we have Spencer that can play a little point guard, but he can play shooting guard. Uh, obviously, Brad does a little bit of both being a combo. Um, you know, we just have a, a, a nice deep team that, you know, offers a lot. And I think in, in today's NBA and where the NBA is going, it's all about continuity offensively and defensively. And, um, you know, just having basketball players on the court that, you know, just can do everything. You know, it's not really it's not really a position type of league uh, anymore. You know, it's kind of just, you know, put the best five players on the court and, uh, you know, just make shit happen out there. So. And you mentioned before your defensive effort. Uh, is it back on your mind the defensive player of the season trophy or to be the all NBA first? Uh, say say NBA it again. Team? You mentioned before your defensive effort in this season. Is it back on your mind the defensive uh, player of the season trophy or to be the, the in the first all NBA defensive team? Uh, I mean, I definitely I take pride in my defense. Um, I have for the past two years uh, as I've been improving. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, being on an all, def all defensive team is important to me because uh, I feel like, you know, with, you know, the way I approach it, uh, how versatile I am, it's not many guys that really do that um, on a consistent basis. So, um, yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. No. And Coos, we'll take the last question back in the room from Josh. Uh -huh. You're getting better. You're getting a lot better. I like that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, pace is just up and down the court. You know, I think uh, from a transition standpoint, you know, that's something that we lack because um, we're, we're not the best team at, you know, throwing the up pass, you know, to guys ahead or, um, you know, just, just sprinting with the ball, you know, uh, you know, especially, you know, makes and misses. Uh, and then also it's the second part in the half court, you know, having pace, you know, having spacing, um, you know, come off a of pick and roll really hard, uh, you know, DHOing, dribble handoff, dribble handoffing to someone, you know, um, at their defender or at the right speed so they can turn the corner or slipping out of, uh, you know, a pick and roll so the offensive player with the ball has – uh, advantage getting downhill. You know, those are things that we're, you know, trying to improve um, because it's important because that's what the NBA is now. You know, a lot of teams switch uh, one through five now. And, um, you know, you've, you've, you've seen it this year with us. You know, the teams we, we've lost to Charlotte switch one through five, Brooklyn switch one through five. Um, you know, I, I'm missing some teams, but you get my point where, um, you know, we get a lot of stagnant offense and, you know, that correlates to like, you know, the pace of what we do things. So, um, you know, I think if we can control that aspect and, and, you know, just get a better grasp of what we want to do execution wise uh, within that, I think, um, you know, you'll see a, a lot more improvement from an offensive standpoint because, you know, we have a lot of weapons. We have a lot of people that can do things, but, um, you know, it's all about one being put in the right situation, but also uh, just getting just getting it done and doing it. So, uh, you know, that's what I like to see. Yesterday pregame, I believe you remarked that uh, Rui is with you guys moving forward. I just want to clarify, does that mean he's not with Kobo? It's like in practices and shoot around? Yeah, we're going to try and, you know, keep him with us as much as possible. Um, there are going to be some times where he may you know, work out with them or practice with them um, just to get reps and, and to get up and down. Um, it's, it's just difficult right now with the lack of practice time, the lack of competitive stuff we can do. Uh, we'll still do a lot of scripting, shooting, you know, a lot of walkthroughs, all those things, the mental side of it are important, um, but just not having those reps. So, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say 
he'll never have that opportunity, but I think it's, it's wise to be with us as much as he can, you know, where, where it makes most sense. Assuming because there was a possibility previously that it could mean traveling with you guys in the subsequent run. Yeah, well, we're still kind of processing some of that. Um, you know, does it make sense with the back to back? Uh, where, you know, he has opportunity to be here, work out, you know, you have the facility to do what you have to do versus, you know, those, those situations is a ballroom walkthrough. You're not getting, you know, much conditioning or much on the court work. Uh, where, where the, where's the gain in that? So we'll have to kind of look at those things and, you know, decide what makes most sense for him uh, as well as us moving forward. To some degree, you know, I think um, I don't get too caught up in, you know, the raw numbers, the rankings, uh, because, you know, sometimes it's your two percentage points, you know, from being in the top three. Uh, so it's not it's not necessarily an indictment. We haven't defended as well as we were earlier in the year, but uh, it's a long season, you know, and I think if we're hovering around the top 10 at the end of the season, we're, we're in a pretty good spot. But you know, I don't necessarily fall into, well, we have to be this rank or, or bust. Um, I think it's just important that we take those opportunities and, and try to defend at a higher level for longer stretches. I think, I think he's okay. Honestly, it's, it's tough to tell. It's just, it's flu-like symptoms that they're obviously non-COVID illness both him and Aaron. Um, so we don't want those guys, or, you know, to be in the facility or around other guys if by chance, um, you know, there, there is a, an opportunity to <laughs> infect the whole group, but um, I think they're okay. Um, we still don't know their availability for tomorrow, but uh, we'll know shortly. You weren't doing a, a check. You weren't. Was that? You weren't. I'm, 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah, he just a lot of minutes last night, some bumps and bruises. Uh, so it's just we weren't doing a whole lot today anyway, a lot of film um, and basically just shooting. So, you know, it's just no sense in, you know, adding more on his body. Um, but no, he didn't do the shooting, but he, he, he seemed like he's okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't want him to have to do that, you know, every night, every possession, but um, that goes back to that flexibility. You know, we've spoken about that quite often. Uh, his size, you know, allows for that, his mobility. Um, he's got a good sense for personnel. Um, so, you know, we're going to ask him to do some of those things quite often. Um, but, you know, it's just whether it's him, Denny, uh, I think Rui can fall in that category. You know, all those guys have the ability, the, um, you know, the, the foot quickness and speed, the agility, the strength. Um, so it's, it, it's a good thing to have it that, it, you know, can always kind of throw different looks at different guys. Denny has been um, your guy's second best shot blocker, you know, based on per 36 minutes on the back of the court. Um, he wasn't really a shot blocker last year or in the Euro League. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think, or how do you think he's developed in that? Well, I think some of it is it's not like he's blocking shots. You know, Gafford's getting a lot of those at the rim. He's getting them, you know, at the at the point of the release. So just having high active hands, um, you know, the timing, and he's getting those shots. Um, you know, guys are trying to get around him or, you know, navigate through him, and he's just kind of playing the the angles. Um, and he's smart enough to figure it out. But um, it's, it's a different, you know, perspective. Gath, I think, you know, when guys drive, they're looking for him. And I think Denny's is more in the one-on-one -on -one where he's kind of making plays late, you know, at the, at the apex of someone's jump shot. And with Rui, uh, you know, as far as we know, there's no injury involved. Just why, how would you describe why the process has kind of been so incremental and step-by-step? Step? Well, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, with missing as much time as he had, it's kind of a ramp up like we saw in the preseason. You know, this is kind of his preseason, you know, where – you can't just throw a guy out there and think, hey, he's going to respond well physically. It's just, it's too much. Um, 
you know, so trying to find those, those moments, whether it's one-on-one, one-on-one versus a coach, transitioning into two-on-two, three-on-three, that takes a while. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want to just throw them out there too soon and, and there be a, an injury or an issue, which may set him back further. Yes, uh, now, asking these questions in order, but one more on the shot blocking. You know, if you look at uh, stats in the middle league, there's just not that many blocked shots in the league, but we get like two plus a, a game. Have you noticed that before you watched the league and noticed there's not a lot of blocked shots or players come over from the Euro league and be able to tap into that and steal? Yeah, that's a good question. Honestly, I don't watch a ton of like Euro league games. We do pull a lot of a lot of clips. You know, offensively, there's some things that you know, there's a great ball movement and you know the versatility that they play with. Um, you know. They, they're, there's a lot of side to side ball and body movement. And so there's, there are a lot of things we steal from your league, you know, concepts, but from a defensive perspective, I, I never really looked at it that way. Um, I don't know if it's just an overall theme or even if it's even fair to say the, the difference in the athleticism and the size, you know, the agility of some of the um, players here in this league versus your league. Um, you know, the examples being gaff and, the, you know, those, the high flyers. So you don't see a ton of those in your league. So I think that's part of it, but uh, I don't know uh, if, they, if there's just a different style of play. Um, if guys over there are just more accustomed to anytime they see help, they get off of it. So they're not playing in, in, in crowds. I'm not really sure, but uh, the fact that Denny's able to, to do some of that is it's impactful. Um, and he's shown it against marquee matchups. Coach, uh, regarding really is taking part in contact drills, kind of his next thing, and also did he practice in, and did he do any contact practice before the draft? Uh, you know, he did. Um, and I think it's just, it was, it was limited, you know, but, you know, I think it's more, um, it, it's just one of those ramp up things where he doesn't necessarily have to uh, be right away. Um, he's going to do more and more of the conceptual stuff with us now, just to kind of, all right, here's our base package defense. Here's some things, you know, terminology wise, offensively, here's just a few things that we're going to play out of just to help bring them along. I think it's too much to just throw the whole playbook at a guy and say, all right, you know, you got to learn it. Um, so just trying to minimize, you know, uh, so then when he is ready to kind of ramp up, he can be effective in those moments. Uh, and those practices, sadly, are going to come far and few between. So how else can we find ways to, to get him up to speed? It's, it's a diff difficult challenge, uh, but the sooner the better. I know it's just practice, but how is the shooting looking? I know you mentioned that it looks good. And yeah. Been looking these three pointers and no, it looks really good. And I don't have a ton to go on, but um, there's a comfort level. And I think, you know, having played in August, um, you know, well, I've watched those games and he was playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. So I think that I hope, you know, will translate um, and there'll be a comfort level with him, you know, stretching out, stretching the floor, being able to play off the bounce and, you know, maybe expanding his game a bit from last season. All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Coach, um, apologies if it was already asked. I couldn't hear that well. What's the current status of Aaron and Denny? Is it, you know, they're kind of just out until they feel better, or where is that right now? I don't know what the medical diagnosis is with, with those two, but, um, you know, flu-like symptoms. So uh, they've, they've had them tested for COVID and the whole nine, so non-COVID illness. Um uh, their availability, I'm, st I'm st still not, you know, completely certain on. Um, I would think more probable than not, but I, I don't want to speak to that. And I guess, have you been in any contact with them? Are they, you know, feeling okay? Is it just, you know, yeah, yeah, kind I, of I cold stuff? Yeah, I text both of them. And, you know, they, I think they're under the weather, but I don't think it's anything that's, uh, you know, too significant. And then, you know, you guys have talked a lot about sustaining, you know, success, not getting complacent with it. How do you try and communicate that to your team, you know, during this kind of a practice session? Well, a lot of it's through film. I mean, it's, it's once again, the kind of the one tool that we can rely on right now with uh, not having bodies and or time to really kind of go after it, um, really just breaking things down. And, you know, and it's, it's great when you see the same clips with the same people involved. Here's an example of us doing it correctly on either side of the ball. And here's another example. So, um, you know, you can really kind of harp on those messages and kind of get a clear picture of where we are. Um, the guys understand how we want to be and how we need to play. Thanks, Coach.
with a peeny. Hey, coach. Uh, quick question about Danny. Uh, we saw in, we saw in the last uh, previous game his impact on the defensive end, and he's becoming some kind of a defensive stopper. But I wanted to know what do you think about his uh, offensive uh, development, and how do you see him going forward? Well, I think his, uh, the offensive side is you know, an area that it's, it's, it's going to take a little bit more time. So I think the one thing you control in, on, on the defensive end is obviously understanding your personnel, understanding your assignment, you know, um, uh, but also your effort, your energy. Um, that's easy to control. You know, on, on offense sometimes, you know, reading the spatial dynamic, being in the right spot, you know, knowing when to cut, uh, when to screen. So, you know, some of that takes time. Um, I, he, he feel, I feel like he's been more confident in, in as far as just shooting the ball, which I love. You know, he's not pressing. He's not trying to hunt, hunt for shots. But he's going to step up and take the shots that, uh, you know, present themselves. I think if he does that, there, there's a comfort level for him, but it's also for our group uh, that, he, you know, he's going to step up and eventually start knocking those down. Also, we saw uh, Kuzma last night uh, guarding uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, what was the strategy behind that and giving maybe Gafford to maybe help more on defense and putting Kuzma on him? Yeah, overall, we thought, you know, if they can grind for tough twos, um, you know, that this is a team that was going to shoot a tremendous amount of threes. Um, so how can we minimize that? You know, obviously, we, we had to give Kuz help, you know, but we don't want to get caught overhelping. Um, and with Gaff roaming kind of that back line, we saw early in the game, his presence at the rim was impactful. Um, you know, outside of that little stretch in the second quarter, it was like a three, four minute stretch. They really tried to exploit the post-ups. Uh, and he's, he's a tremendous player, tremendous offensive weapon. Um, you know, it's tough for, for anyone, more or less a guy who's going to give up probably five or six inches and, you know, probably 20 or 30 pounds. Um, but, you know, you look at over the course of the game, the number of post-ups, um versus the output and I, that's that's not the area that hurt us so um you know in that effect i thought it was uh you know uh, impactful way to guard him you know you can't do that for 48 minutes but you know overall i think having the uh the cross match was good thank you coach <laughs> and we'll finish up with christos hello coach how are you Uh, coach, tomorrow you're going to face one of the most athletic and uh, one of the most young teams in this league, Cleveland Cavaliers, and maybe one of the of the best big men in this league, Jared Allen. How big, uh, how key big factor of your defensive uh, effort is Daniel Gafford, especially on uh, the matchup over Allen tomorrow? Oh, it's big. You know, and I, I, obviously it's not all on Daniel. Um, the amount of pressure he puts, you know, just rolling pick and rolls. Um, and, and just to watch him from afar, he seems like he's gotten progressively better each season from his finishing, playmaking in the pocket, um, you know, finishing possessions, you know, making free throws, um, all those things. But he puts so much pressure on that defense um, and, their, and their guards playing downhill. You got to make a choice. Do you impact at the point, um, which now opens up the three? So now you have to scramble out with, you know, the, the amount of shooting they can put on the floor. It's another team that we've seen over the last four or five games They're getting, you know, just a shade under 40 uh, three-point attempts up per game. So um, being able to control the paint um, and yet get out to shooters um, and get them off the line. The, the one issue is, you know, they're, they're shooting. They have a lot of shooting bigs as well, you know, or, or whether you want to call Markin in the three, the four, uh, obviously Kevin Love. So they're going to put a lot of pressure on you in, in a number of ways. So how do we kind of, you know, minimize some of it, you know, knowing that, do one thing, you're opening something else. So it, it's definitely going to be a challenge and uh, not for, just for Daniel, but for this, uh, for our whole group. And for your success on defense event so far in the beginning of the season, how big part uh, of it Kyle Kuzma is and his uh, consistency on uh, that then so far? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been great for us. You know, we're asking him to guard, you know, tough matchups every night, you know, not just him, but, you know, Pope. Um, both those guys have kind of bought into that, you know, and I think, uh, and I said this a number of times with their experiences, having won in the finals, I think they know how important that side of the ball is. So, uh, you know, not only is the, the playmaking, his versatility and his, his ability to push um, in the open floor, but, you know, we're asking him to kind of mix and match, sometimes guard smalls. Obviously last night guarding one of the best bigs in the game. 
um, to have that versatility and the fact that he's bought into it, you know, on top of the fact he's rebounding at a high level. So you, you put all those things together. It's really, uh, it's been a bright spot, bright spot for us.